Hello everyone, oh boy is here ready to share another simple but cool elementor trick with you. This time I'll show you how to make the content sticky but still scrollable which is an awesome feature because that's how the sticky content doesn't overlap any other content on a page. You can see the final result on the screen right now. Something like that might be called the sticky sidebar and the most likely used for that very purpose. It's also known as the stay in the column effect. Many of you will say that this is similar to the synchronous scrolling. Anyhow, it's meant to work with at least two columns, in a way that the column with a greater amount of content starts to scroll sooner, while the shorter one remains sticky until their bottom lines meet. And once that happens, the sticky column starts scrolling along with the bigger one. You can have as many columns in a section as you like. The most interesting part is the fact that all it takes to do something like that is not more than two simple CSS rules. There would actually be only one but if we want to make things work in Safari Browser 2, we gotta add one extra rule. So let's do it. I'm gonna create the basic example with two columns only, and everything that works for these two columns will work for any number of columns in any arrangement. Because of the fact that I have to be able to group multiple widgets somehow, I gotta use the intersection widget for that purpose. My intersection widget has to become sticky for what I'm up to because in Elementor you cannot make the column itself sticky. So I'll just add some random headings, text and photos to my intersection. My goal is actually to add enough content to make the page scrollable, to make the effect have sense. It doesn't matter which of my two columns will have more content because everything will work fine with any column. Your content might be dynamic too, so theoretically you never know how tall a particular column is going to be. As usually, you'll be able to download the training file from the link in the description of this video, and the training file contains more examples than just the basic example with two columns that I'm about to do. In case you don't have steroids for Elementor add-on installed yet, I encourage you to do that because the training file depends on it. Okay, now I just have to add the new section below so you, can, so you can clearly see how my intersection behave while scrolling. If you remember, I said that the column with the greater amount of content starts to scroll sooner while the shorter one remains sticky until their bottom lines meet. So the section number two can be considered either as a page footer or simply as just another portion or piece of content on a page and which might be followed by another set of sticky scrollable content. Just to mention that in Elementor, you cannot make the intersection sticky and stay in the column while scrolling, which is exactly what we need now. That's the only widget, as far as I know, that's not allowed to stay in a column while scrolling, and that's kind of silly. Okay, now that we have our content or the layout ready, we're gonna use some custom class names for the outermost columns. These are the two master section columns, and the custom class name for our intersection widgets that are used to group our content widgets, headings, photos, and text. After that, I'll simply add or assign required CSS code or CSS rules to my custom class names. So first, I'm gonna highlight the outermost column, select the advanced tab, expand the namesake panel, and enter my custom class name into the CSS classes input field. I'm gonna name it sticky section wrapper. Likewise, I'll highlight the second outermost column, go to the advanced tab, advanced panel, and enter the identical custom class name into the CSS classes input field. Next, I'll highlight the first intersection widget, select the advanced tab, expand the advanced panel, and enter the custom class name into the CSS classes input field. Both of my intersection widget will have identical class names, which is going to be sticky section. If you wonder why the outermost columns or the intersection widgets share the same class names, well, it's simply because they're supposed to inherit identical CSS rules. I don't want to write the same CSS rule over and over for each and every column or the widget. I'll rather define particular CSS rule only once, assign it to the particular class name, and simply reuse, okay? Class names make the CSS rule reusable. Alrighty. Let's now create our CSS rules because all we got so far are the two custom class names that do nothing on their own. This time, we ain't gonna define our CSS rules per widget. As you know, in Elementor Pro, each and every element or widget has its own custom CSS panel that is used to define or redefine existing rules. 
This time we're gonna use the custom CSS panel of the page settings because we are creating some sort of the global rules, reusable ones, and we don't want to bind them to the particular widget only. So click on that cog icon in the lower left corner of the editor first, and then select the advanced tab again. The only thing that you can currently find there is a custom CSS panel, as you can see. Our first CSS rule relates to the outermost column whose class name is the sticky section wrapper. More precisely, we ain't targeting the column itself, but rather its child element with the existing class name, Elementor Widget Wrap. It was assigned by Elementor, okay? So I'll just copy paste. And let me explain. That very child element cannot be selected in Elementor Editor and thus we cannot assign particular class name directly to it. But rather, we got to take a longer route and this is the, the route we are taking, okay? The first rule is only needed by Safari browser. Firefox, Edge or Chrome won't need this one ever. Now the rule number two, just copy paste. This one should be pretty much self-explanatory. Sticky section is our intersection widget whose position should be sticky and placed in the very top of the column. And that's it. As you can see, things immediately started to function as expected. In this example, I have made both of my intersections sticky and scrollable by assigning them the custom class name. It means that both of them share behavior or functionality. And it also means that if I delete the custom class name, things won't work anymore. As simple as that. Let's see what happens if I duplicate my second column and change the amount of content. So right mouse click on a column icon and duplicate. Now let's remove some of the text blocks. Let's make this column the shortest one. I guess that's how things might become even more obvious. I mean. You can literally build the entire layout around the idea of sticky scrolling, okay? You will see that everything works the same way as long as my outermost column and the intersection widget keep their custom class names. So there it is. That's how it looks like with another column added. When it comes to responsiveness, rest assured it's all good. I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial that the effect won't that the effect works for two or more columns placed one next to another. As you know, the columns collapse for mobile devices in Elementor, thus making the effect invalid. Okay? At the end, feel free to let me know how you use this trick. Don't forget to download the training file, but first be sure to install the copy of Steroids for Elementor add-on, otherwise the file is going to look like shit after you import it to Elementor. Alright? Hopefully you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, peace and love.